Hi, everyone, and welcome. Uh, my name is Angela Mastronardi, and I'm the president of um, IATSE Local 873. I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you all to the first off-camera virtual interactive live art exhibition. I'd like to thank Tatiana Hudnik and her crew for all their hard work and for bringing this project to the attention of the IATSE 873's executive board, thus allowing us this wonderful opportunity to sponsor this event. I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to gather with us this evening in what has become our new reality. Uh, we've all learned to Zoom over such a very short period of time. And so having said that, I'm gonna ask for your patience in case of any small glitches that may occur. We're going to try our best, but you know, it's amazing to me to see how well we've all adapted, how we found ways to continue telling our stories and to use art in this most fundamental of ways. Art allows us to create, to hope, and to see a better future. I'm going to hand this over to Tatiana. Uh, thank you very much, Angela. It's a very lovely uh, opening uh, speech. Uh, I would like to uh, welcome everybody to the Off Camera 2020 Virtual Art Exhibition and the Virtual Live Art Reception. This project promotes artists who work in the film industry and are the creatives behind numerous Hollywood film productions, such as Oscar-winning uh, film Shape of Water or Chicago, Incredible, Incredible Hulk, or others, other TV series such as Handmaid's Tale, Boys, Titans, Umbrella Academy, Rain, or Suits, to name a few. All of them were filmed here and in, in and around Toronto. This year's, uh, this year's exhibition features works of 68 visual artists, members of IATSE 873. IATSE 873 is the Toronto's largest film and television production union. My name is Tatiana Kutinets. I'm a visual artist and a member of IATSE 873. I'm also the organizer of the off-camera project. Uh, this year, I will be uh, co-hosting here with Teresa Donato, who is also our brilliant tech support. And thank you, Teresa. Uh, I would like to um, I would like to express uh, 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 gratitude to IATSE 873. Um, uh, IATSE 873 stands for International Alliance of Theatrical and Stage Employees and Moving Picture Technicians. Uh, for those who don't know, um, and they are sponsoring uh, this webpage. And uh, thank you very much to Angela Mastronardi for um, uh, helping us uh, host this event tonight, uh, for all the technical support and for all the support in general. Uh, thank you also the coordinator, Alejandra, uh, for helping us uh, with the correspondence with the union members. Uh, I, and of course, I would like to thank to all the artists who submitted their work uh, for the virtual show, um, the webpage, as well as the panelists, artists who are here to, uh, for the artist talk. I would also like to thank uh, Yasmina Mujkanovic, who is uh, for her great help and uh, during the process of the art submissions, as well as for her contributions for the webpage contents and creation of the Instagram account. Um, Gallery 1313 for hosting our exhibition page, um, uh, sorry, our, our exhibition page on their website, and Phil Anderson, um, he is the gallery director. Um, so uh, Angela Mastronardi is honoring us with her presence tonight. Uh, 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 would you like to add anything else to your opening or can I go to the next? Uh, uh, I, will, uh, uh, I, I would actually like to say one tiny little thing because um, I just wanted to thank all our talented artists uh, who are all on the panel here tonight. Not all of them, but some of them, and you're going to be meeting them and as you view their art. And I'm just so proud uh, of all the truly, truly amazingly talented people that this union um, calls family, calls home. I am just so proud to be a member of 873, always have been and always will be. Thank you all. Thank you, Angela, very much. Uh, so uh, off camera 2020 uh, artists will be supporting uh, this year um, 
that will be supporting AFC, which is formerly known as Actors Fund of Canada, by donating a portion of art sales to them. Uh, the AFC is a, nation, a national uh, charity with a mission to help entertainment professionals to maintain their health, dignity, and ability to work when they find themselves most vulnerable from illness or uh, injury or hardship. Uh, the Ontario film industry, which uh, generates 2.6 generated 2.6 million dollars billion dollars in the uh, in the 2019 uh, came to a complete halt on March 17 and uh, left thousands of people across Ontario unemployed. AFC was there to help many of them. Uh, I would like to invite uh, Mark Manchester on behalf of AFC uh, to say a few words now. Greetings, a greetings everybody. Oh, how's my audio? Yeah. How's that? Okay. Greetings. Um, uh, thanks to all who are visiting Off Camera 2020 and to all the amazing contributing artists and to all our curators and hosts, Tatiana, Yasmin, and, and Gallery 1313. Also, big thanks to IATSE 873 for their support and all the uh, and recognizing all the good works done on behalf of the entertainment industry professionals across Canada by the AFC. A percentage of the sales, as has been mentioned from this wonderful gallery, are pledged to the AFC. In lieu of purchase, donations are most gratefully accepted online at afchelps.ca, and those can be those will be tax deductible um, donations. As a director of the AFC, finishing three two-year terms, I've worked with 11 other volunteer directors and the most amazing staff to aid and assist members of our industry. My tenure follows in the, in the footsteps of people like Donald Mowat, the amazing award-winning makeup artist, and Christopher Dean, the amazing key grip, from, <clears throat> who come from the technical crafts. We also have arts administrators, justice advocates, a dance choreographer, an assistant director, and of course, an actor or two in the, on the board. The AFC was founded in, in 1958 as the Actors Fund of Canada, and we rebranded in 2016. Oh, heck. <laughs> yeah, it just took away my speech. Oh, well. Just a second. Sorry. Uh, okay, that was a glitch. Um, yeah, so we were rebranded in 2016, 20, to, in order to demonstrate to our community that we, were, that we are not exclusive to actors, but inclusive of anyone who wants to make a majority of their livelihood in the entertainment industry, coast to coast to coast. The AFC, especially the staff, have been working very hard during this recent months helping hundreds of our colleagues and, our, and their families to the tune of almost a million dollars weather this COVID storm. And it's unfortunately not quite over yet. Every dollar received pretty much goes right back out the door to help support drivers, film, theater techs, dancers, musicians, company office workers, producers, actors, and many more. The AFC has broadened its guidelines for emergency financial aid so as to help as many people as possible get through this crisis. And you should know that the help we're, we're providing has been made possible with the generous backing of our many unions, a number of major studios, and of course you. There have been a number of imaginative fund and awareness raisers over the years, particularly during the last few months. The AFC has prided itself in being for the community using funds raised by the community. An example of the is the Real Funds, a Real Friends program, pardon me, receiving a dedicated percentage agreed to by working people per paycheck. I, like many, have been giving 1% of my paycheck for a number of years, for instance. Some of us give more. Alas, this source is on hiatus along with the rest of us for now. So this evening, you'll enjoy hearing from the artists and seeing the amazing works. And upon making a, an investment in some piece or pieces, you will have the opportunity to contribute to your fellow artists and craftspeople through and through 
a fringe benefit attached to each sale, the AFC. For this, we all thank you. Perhaps you are not purchasing a piece of art this evening or over the next couple of weeks during this exposition, but a donation would still be most gratefully accepted at afchelps.ca. If you have a glass in hand, please raise it in a toast to our community of artists, our community of unions and guilds, our frontline worker organizations like the AFC, and to yourselves. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks, Teresa. Uh, Tatiana, do you want to take this back? Yes, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, I will continue with the program. program. The Off Camera 2020 is envisioned as a project that includes uh, virtual uh, uh, that includes virtual art exhibition and a virtual live art reception to interact with the artists uh, we also created social media presence and provided a platform to promote and sell the art and fundraise some people ask me why do i think that the creating a virtual art reception is important or why would they even bother joining it so I think uh, art reception is a social event and it's also a business opportunity. It's a public relation, public relation of opportunity. It is exposure. It is up to all who involved uh, to send out the art show uh, notices about the show and to graciously attend the reception. Uh, the reception can also be even a reason to dress up and in our case, at least waste up. <laughs> in this uh, unprecedented times of a pandemic disease taking over the planet Earth and media thriving on spreading fear, bad news, disaster, and pain. The virtual mingle with the artists and looking at their art may give someone a hope in better future, help them relax, perhaps entertain, or make them think. And by, while the, the film and series um, uh, are being celebrated, uh, are celebrating their success at various award-winning events, the Off-Camera 2020 reception recognizes, celebrates, and promotes promotes individual artists who contributed to those uh, film, uh, uh, su successful film productions. Uh, let's promote and celebrate art and artists exhibiting in the off-camera 2020 and have a toast at a very safe distance. Cheers. Uh, the, event, uh, the event will be recorded and posted on YouTube channel after the event, so those who were not able to join us tonight will be able to see it after. And uh, uh, we would like to, uh, uh, we were wondering if any of the audience had a chance to preview the artwork on the webpage and perhaps want to buy any of the pieces, please let us know. We would be happy to announce it right now live. Uh, otherwise, uh, please let us know if, um, if you have any Q and A's, if you have any questions, uh, please write them in the section uh, Q and A uh, and we will answer them to the best of our ability at the end of the presentation, so um, uh, after the artist talk. Um, so first up, uh, Teresa will start by announcing the artists and their artwork. We will go down the web page um, uh, of Camera 2020, and we will stop along the way as uh, we come across the artists who are present here tonight, the artist panelists, who will then introduce themselves and uh, say um, a little bit about their work. Uh, so, uh, at this time, uh, uh, because artists will be introducing themselves, uh, I will just introduce our last speaker, uh, Tom Sandler, uh, who is a photojournalist and who has been uh, photographing off-camera events in the past and uh, has, been, uh, the, has been connected to the film industry in, in Toronto since the early days on CFC. Is Tom here? Say hi. <laughs> um, so, the... Uh, So the, uh, the, the, the virtual tour panelists uh, will be starting with myself, actually, since I'm the first one up on, um, on the page. Uh, okay, thank you, Teresa. Um, so these are, uh, th this is the first picture that is on the website. It is a painting. Um, uh, well, it's, it, it is a painting, uh, 28 by 20, uh, uh, oil on canvas. I will actually take uh, take this uh, 
Sorry, I will go into a share screen. So my name is Tatiana Hutinets, uh, and I grew up and studied art and design in Zagreb, Croatia. Since 1990, I displaced a displaced due to the war outburst in Croatia, I have been living in Toronto. I have been working in film and TV uh, and theater, in costumes and scenic paint. Um, I, I created uh, special effects costumes, accessories, painted textures, uh, effects and distressing, and built sculptures. I have been balancing the work in film with creating art and organizing solo and group exhibitions and events. I'm very grateful for working in film which gave me opportunity to meet and work with extraordinary talented people and also to read about history and research cultures and their mythologies. And I just want to show you a little bit close up this face here. Um, uh, the, 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 story, um, the story by David Foster Wallace about the two fish who were hanging out in the water and the third fish swim by and says, hey guys, how is the water today? And when he swims away, the one of the two fish uh, cluelessly asks, what the hell is water? This story inspired me to explore the thematic of water and fish symbolism and its archetypal representation. Uh, the fish symbolizes fertility, feelings, creativity, rebirth, good luck, transformation, abundance, intelligence, happiness, uh, and endurance. Connecting us with the water element, it represents the deeper awareness of the un unconsciousness or, or a higher self. Um, Scarpe oh, sorry, I'm just going <laughs> to skip one more. I, I, um, Scarpina is a fish. Uh, uh, Scarpina is a fish family which lives uh, all over the world and some, and comes in various shapes and colors. The red color Scarpina is specific for Adriatic Sea and is considered a delicacy in Croatia. It is a very hard to catch. When it feels threatened, it spreads the, sp the spikes and fins and sticks them into the rocks where she hides. So whoever tries to pull it out is in for a very painful experience. Scarpina is also a hermaphrodite. Uh, it has both male and female sex organs, which are individually activated at different stages of life and according to their instinctive need to procreate, depending on whether there is food shortage or not. The next painting is John Dory. It is also a fish that, um, a family of fish that lives um, in, in a variety of seas and comes in various shapes and waters. The dark spot uh, is used to flash an evil eye if danger approaches and also to scare the small fish to swim away from the dark towards the mouth. Um, beside the paintings of fish, my new series above and below, uh, as above, so below, also includes seascapes and skyscapes some of which are abstract and some more realistic and figurative. The expressions, the expression as above, so below, references that, references that of what goes on above, your own mind affects and influences the below, your emotions, your body and environment. The painting as above, so below, explores the metaphor of water, which comes in various forms in nature above and below us, within us and around us. And while it is essential for life, we may not even acknowledge it. And referencing the fish from the previous story, we may ask, what the hell is water? I believe that art is not just a product and an end in itself, but it is also a process of communication, the self-exploratory inner dialogue and debate which arises within the artist during the creation of artwork, All artists, yes. transforms and translates into the language of art creation, and this dialogue continues on between a viewer and the work of art. To see uh, any other images uh, of my work, please visit tatianakutinets.com. I can also arrange private viewing uh, of my, at my studio. Thank you. Uh, how do I exit screen now? Oh, here. Okay. 
So I'll dead back to Teresa now. Okay, thank you. Our next piece is by Fraser Patterson. It's entitled Twiggy, and it's made of steel and ash. Fraser Patterson's next piece, titled Subliminal, is made of steel and alabaster. For purchase inquiry, please email off camera 2020 or visit his website, fraserpatterson.com. Next artist, Gordon Becker, has a piece called Mirror Mirror. This is made of wood and glass mirror. The viewer can only view this piece depicting racism and protest while seeing the reflection of their own face as part of the artwork. This piece is not for sale. Gordon Becker's second piece called Three in a Boat is hard maple poplar and ash and wood. The dagger, like keel of the Seattle boat, carrying the Mona Lisa, a virginal bride and the oligarch strikes into the sterile seabed. For more of Gordon's pieces, please visit his website, gordonbecker.com. Our next artist, Eric Ballantyne, has a piece called Uxbridge Sunset. This is a, a piece of photography shot on an iPhone 8. Eric's second piece, titled Staircase in Geneva, is a photography also shot on iPhone 8. These photos have been taken with an iPhone 8, which has ended up being his primary tool for photography for the last 10 years. Please visit his Instagram, Eric Ballantyne, for more pieces of his work. Next is one of our panelists, Lauren Renzetti. Hi there. So uh, the work that you're viewing now are pieces that I've made through thought painting. And uh, in the greater scheme of things, just a little bit about myself, I work in, uh, in film as a scenic painter and I do IATSE color theory. So if you're interested in that, by all means, uh, take an opportunity to uh, take a color theory class. And I think Tom Sandler's uh, mute is all off right now, just so people know. Uh, that background noise is not me. And, uh, and so the dot painting is something that I do uh, as a meditative practice. And what I was going to do is I was going to show you uh, how I do this particular technique. I'm just going to bend my camera down so that you can see. And so basically I'm using paint that is quite fluidy. Uh, this is in fact off-Broadway scenic paint, which is quite viscous. And then it's a question of using dowels. So I'm using uh, different sizes and I even uh, pare down one end versus another so that there's a thicker and thinner aspect to it. And it's just a question of filling a space uh, with a thicker, a thicker paint uh, or a bigger dowel and then moving into a smaller dowel. What's interesting about it is depending on how much pressure you put on it, you can get some really interesting texture going on in there. And uh, for me, the reason why I came about it was I was teaching, uh, I do a lot of art teaching when I'm not working in film, and I was exploring Australian Aboriginal art for a camp for uh, youth, and realized that this was actually a really wonderful practice. And it's, it's interesting to be using something other than a paintbrush, which is, or a roller, or a scraper, or a sanding block. And so I really enjoy working in this particular format as a form of meditation, but it also creates quite a nice texture. And in terms of other work, the, the, the premise behind the Australian Aboriginals is that they want to be painting things that are of a sacred nature to themselves. And so uh, I chose religious icons, but then I realized I'm more of a humanist and animalist and interested in the world. And so the wind harvesters to me, I think are a beautiful object that's in our man-made you know, spaces, but also living in nature. 
And, and the humpback whale uh, was another creature that I just thought is exquisitely beautiful and incredibly huge and something you don't ever get to see very much of if you're going to see any of it. And then this is just a couple more examples. This is a uh, draconian dragon and a and this is a uh, Athena's familiar is an owl. And so just in terms of having lots of different different layers on top of each other. Some of these have three or four layers of dots on top of each other. But, um, you know, for me, I just want to make every day and uh, the end result isn't as important as the process while I'm doing it. So when working in film, I don't get to do a lot of art making, but I don't need to because I'm making in that. So uh, hopefully we'll get back to work soon and, and we'll all get to enjoy making these big, massive works of art that involve thousands of people. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lauren. We'll be moving on to our next artist, Sam Nellix. His piece is called Sisyphus and it's acrylic. It's a flat gradient background contrasted with heavy ribs of color creating the balls, airbrushed highlights and black and white brushed painted figures. Sam's second piece called Earth Movers is modified acrylic polymers. Smooth smoky background around realistic renderings of earth movers cutting through umber waves of textured paint. Please visit samnalex.com for more of his work. Our next piece is Wet Snow by Lisa Herrera. This piece is acrylic on canvas. It's a jogger going west on Queen Street East and Glen Manor in the beach on a wet winter's day. Lisa Herrera's second piece is titled Day at the Powwow. This is acrylic on canvas. This was painted from a photo taken over 20 years ago of a young girl strolling at the powwow. Our next piece by artist Lauren Sills is entitled Soup. This is mixed media on canvas. This is an abstract painting on a stretched canvas. Mixed paint mediums, looks like a bowl of soup to the artist. Next piece, also by Lauren Sills, is entitled White Sands. This is a photograph. This photo was taken by Lauren on a trip to the White Sands National Park in New Mexico in summer of 2018. An incredible place. Our next piece is by artist Morag Webster. It's entitled Celestial Bodies. This piece is oil on canvas. For more of Morag's art, go to morag.com or her Facebook or Instagram, titled Morag Art. This next piece also by Morag Webster is Dancing Ripples. It is oil on canvas. Our next artist, Alexandra Douglas, has entitled her piece, Fruit Alphabet Series, Set of Four. This is watercolor and marker art on cardstock. This collection of four watercolor illustrations is from her Alphabet Fruit Series for surface pattern design, fabric, poster, wallpaper, children's book illustrations, etc. This next piece is by Jessica Craddock. This is a plague doll cat made from real ethically sourced cat skull, polymer clay, paper clay, fabric, notions, acrylic paint. Jessica's second piece is entitled Plague Doll Crow. Real ethically sourced crow skull, polymer clay, paper clay, fabric, Notions Paint. Please visit her Instagram, plague.dolls, for more.
Our next piece is Isolation by Scott Brook. This is acrylic on canvas, gallery wood frame. Scott's second piece, entitled Cherry Blossoms 2020, is acrylic on canvas with a wood frame. Our next artist, Brad Kubian, the old Mish building, acrylic on wood panel. Where Brad lives, the urban acceleration that once represented progress occurred at nature's expense. This work responds by juxtaposing his ideal against the current actual. For more of Brad's work, please visit his website, bradkubianart.com. Brad's second piece is titled Discount Auto. This is acrylic on wood panel. Our next artist, Michael Zarek's piece is called Beast, Beastie. This is Jikli print, signed and numbered, limited edition of 50. Free form lateral thought imagery created digitally without any preconceived idea about what the piece would actually be about. Michael's second piece in this show is called Wine and Spirits. This is a digital image, a satirical look at bar culture, a past novelty due to the novel coronavirus. For more of Michael's work, please visit his website, michaelzarek.com. Next is one of our artists from our panel. I'd like to welcome him to speak. Sorry, I'll try that again. Thank you. David Myers. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Can you guys hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, my name is Stephen Myers. I'm in the lighting department uh, and have been in the lighting department uh, for over three decades now. Um, in order to introduce myself and the approach that I take to my work, I'm just going to read my artist statement, which can also be found on my website at stephenmyersphotography.com. Uh, don't worry, it's quite short. Uh, photography is very important to me as a way of personally interacting with the world around us and then sharing that experience. My photos are my attempt to not only share with you some things that I have seen, but to some extent how I've seen them. Of course, how they are then interpreted by the viewer is entirely up to them. I feel we are all unique and universal at the same time in the human condition. I believe that if a photograph touches or moves you, then a connection has been made, a mood shared, I love photographs which work at several levels and in doing so help to tell a story or a fable or suggest a mystery. Everything within the frame of a photograph, whether animate or inanimate, has an importance, a weight or pull to me. Composition, lighting and above all emotion are important to me in a photograph. I always try to stay open to the possibility of magic, beauty, and simplicity. And thank you very much. And thank you for everyone's uh, who's made this happen. Really appreciate it. There you go. Thank you very much, uh, Stephen. And we're going back to Teresa. Our next piece is by Sarah Blostein. It's entitled Living on Eggshells. The egg, a delicate shell holding precious life within, a symbol of the fragile path people of color are made to tread just to stay alive. If you visit our website, you can click here to view the link of the video that she works in a 360 view. 50% of the sale will be donated to Black Lives Matter. Sarah's second piece, also titled Living on Eggshells, for more of Sarah's work, you can visit her Instagram, 
Sarah.Lostein. Our next piece by Eddie Keynes Floyd is entitled Girls' Night Out. This is acrylic on canvas with wood frame. The artist's second piece is titled The Flower Cellar, acrylic on canvas with wood frame. Our next piece by Laird McMurray is entitled Lavender. This piece is a photograph. The picture of Lavender is from his front yard. He spent 40 years beside a camera in the film industry and it makes him want to see the world the way that he's seen so many talented photographers shoot movies, commercials, and TV to make it look special. Laird's second piece is titled Old School. This is also a photograph. Our next piece is by artist Misha Hunter. The piece is titled Kim's Tools. Misha's second piece is entitled Pretzel. Our next piece is by artist Samantha Terry. The piece is called Feather and Cell Phone. It is oil paint on canvas. This is a portrait combining objects to symbolize the collaboration of tradition and technology. The numbered costume and the female form comments on gender, identity, and ownership. Samantha Terry's next piece is called Man in Blue Shirt. This is oil paint on canvas. An exercise in portrait study. The subject's ambiguous gaze questions the viewer's emotional perception and interpretation. Visit Samantha Terry's art website, samanthaterryart.com, or her Instagram, Samantha Terry Art, to view more of her work. Our next piece is by artist Scott Donay, Anatomy and Architecture Beauty. Digital work rendered in photographic prints. Anatomy and Architecture Beauty is the first of three depicts meant to offer contemplation on the human form and its place in the built world. This piece is made from found imagery, extensively manipulated digitally and printed as two separate photographic images framed and mounted as a single multi-layered piece. Our next piece is by artist Ramon Serrano. The piece is entitled Heroic. This is oil on canvas. Ramon's second piece is called Delusive. This is oil on canvas. For more of his work, visit julioramoserrano.com. The next piece is by artist Andrew Mastin. It's called Sun Hua Fruit Market. This is framed Jicli print, digital illustration. This is an illustration of a fruit and vegetable stand in the Kensington Market neighborhood of Toronto. Andrew's second piece is called Moonbeam Coffee Company. 
This is an illustration of a coffee shop in the Kensington Market neighborhood of Toronto. For more of Andrew's work, visit his website, andrewmassonart.format.com. Our next piece is by one of our panelists, Sarah Locke. Hello. Oh, I think I just need to get, there we go. Can you hear me? Awesome. So my pieces are mainly wood burning. I've been doing drawing and painting for pretty much my entire life. Um, I'm currently, I've been actually a scenic paint member for over five years now in IATSE. I'm also a sign writer and also a painter outside of work. <laughs> so for my pieces that I submitted in the past, probably I've been in Nova Scotia for about six or seven months now since before the pandemic hit. Of course, when the pandemic hit, I was kind of here visiting, but it's been a longer stay than I thought it would. And I was trying to think of things that I could do while I was out here. I unfortunately was not able to bring any of my paintings with me, none of my brushes or anything. They're all back home in Ontario. But one of the things I've always wanted to try, my, my dad actually suggested that I try wood burning. So in November, when I first got here, I thought, mm, maybe I'll give it a try. And I actually bought a little wood burning kit off of Amazon and I just started and this is all I use pretty much for all my wood burnings, like a little wood burning pen. And most of the pieces I use are walnut slabs. I buy them locally at the local art store and I try to shop around at the local Atlantic uh, wood supplies. And most of my designs are actually based on my drawings. I've always loved drawing realism. I started drawing mandalas about five years ago and I was trying to think of how I could make that more unique, my drawings more unique. So I sort of incorporated both mandalas and animals together. And they sort of came into these designs and a couple of my designs recently. One of the ones I actually just finished is kind of an example of what I do wood burning, associating different line works, but at the same time doing things just like stippling and different types of shadowing. And the pieces that are for sale are on walnut slabs and they are based on my own personal drawings and it's been a great thing to do during quarantine of course trying to pass the time and learning new skills it's been a great opportunity and thank you so much again for allowing me to take part in this, this is my first online gallery experience and i love it thank you thank you very much uh, sarah we are back to teresa now represent uh present Our next artist is another panelist. I'd like to welcome him to introduce himself. Hi, I'm Laird Rayner. <laughs> and uh, there we go. And okay, uh, stop video. Okay, mute. Okay, can everybody hear me? All right. I'm in the set deck department where this year I've been working. I still have Tatiana. Uh, um, can we please get Laird Reiner on yeah, our screen? Yeah, there we go. It's okay. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm Laird Reiner and I'm in the set deck department where this year I've been working in the warehouse at sea. Uh, this is my workshop, my studio, my brewery, my design space, and it's about as clean as it gets between shows. Unfortunately, I haven't been painting during the lockdown, but I've had a chance to photograph my paintings, some of which I had actually for completely forgotten about, with the aims of making them available for rentals and sales on a website. I've been painting for some time. After high school, I attended Sheridan College for the technical theater course. And then I went to the Dundas Valley School of Art for a couple of years while I decided what I really wanted to do, which was theater. Uh, but breaking into theater uh, in the 80s was tough. And although I had a number of positions, nothing led to anything permanent. 
A friend of mine from Sheridan mentioned that the film unions were hiring and that my work experience in education gave me an in. Well, I've been in the business for more than 30 years now. As we all know, working in the business gives one little time to do anything else. So I haven't been painting too much in the last years. When I had winter months free, I joined a community center art class once a week, and that rekindled my return to painting. Some of my paintings, which you see behind me, uh, have been inspired by sets from shows that I've worked on, some by photographs that I've taken, and some by ideas. I found that I photograph sets on the job and later translate them into paintings. Primarily, I'm interested in color play and the interaction of light on a wide range of subjects like flowers and landscapes and sets. Um, <clears throat> I'm really interested and inspired by modernism. Um, so during this time in the lockdown has given me time to look at my work afresh, obviously, because some of them I just rediscovered completely, and to resolve to keep painting and make sure and get myself some resolutions about what to do next. This show has given me uh, the impetus to revisit my work, obviously, and get back to painting. I'd like to thank the show's organizers, and I wish to thank, I wish all the participants the best. And hopefully, we'll get to see you and your work at the next show, maybe even all together in one place. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our next piece is by artist Cameron Brooke. This piece is called Masquerade. It's acrylic on meso. Next piece, also by Cameron Brooke, is called Take a Knee. This is acrylic on meso. Our next piece, Orange, by Sue Usewalk, is cold wax and oil paint. This piece is not for sale. What to do when running out of black paint? Use orange, happy, fresh, optimistic orange, creating a floating up and out of the darker. Next piece by artist Rachel Kynitz is called Vase Still Life. This is acrylic and paper collage on canvas. While creating Vase Still Life, she imposed color restrictions which pushed her outside of her comfort zone and allowed her to create something totally different from her usual work. Rachel's second piece is called Sisters. This is acrylic and paper collage on canvas. The Nest series are representations of a home, a sanctuary, a safe cocoon for you and your loved ones, also of new beginnings and transformation. To see more of Rachel's work, please visit her website, rachelkynitz.com, or her Instagram, rachelkynitzart. The next piece is called Tropical Interlude 2 by Francisco Gomez. This piece is acrylic and paper collage on canvas. The second piece, also by Francisco, is Tropical Interlude 4. This piece is acrylic and paper collage on canvas. Our next piece is by Jeffrey Helgeson. This piece is called Fledging Eastern Screech Owl. This is a DSLR photo and is not for sale.
Jeffrey's second piece is called Roosting Long-Eared Owl. This is also a DSLR photo and not for sale. To see more of Jeffrey's work, please visit his Instagram, Norsefura2. Next is Catching a Little of You by Jane Hugard. This piece is acrylic on canvas with embroidery floss. Our next piece is by one of our panelists. I'll allow Carly to introduce herself. Hello, can you hear me? Can you see me? Yes, we can. can. Okay, great, I can't see me, so I don't know. Um, anyway, hi, I'm Carly Brenner Hunter. I'm also probably more commonly known as Carly Underwater. Um, I've been working in the film industry since 2007 when I took a long sabbatical that lasted almost six years uh, to travel and I found my love for scuba diving and the underwater world. Um, since then I've combined my passions of cinematography, photography, travel, but more importantly the underwater world and my goal in life right now is to show people the beauty but also the destruction of what we've, um, what we've done to the underwater world. Um, I'm a paddy dive master and a boat captain. I'm a DCBC commercial diver and one of very few in our industry, um, as well as the only female underwater specialist in all of Eastern Canada uh, with IATSE. I'm a member of Local 667 and 873, and I own a water safety company, Carly Underwater Film and Safety Inc. Every chance I get, I'm in the water shooting. Um, even this weekend, I actually am leading a group of women. Uh, I've got nine women traveling with me up to Tobermory, Ontario, and then also in Goderich and Kim Cardian all weekend long for Paddy's International Women's Day of Diving. Uh, COVID gave me a chance to edit more photos and also to work on my documentary that's called Rex, uh, which is showcasing Canadian shipwrecks, starting with my favorite and also where I'm headed this weekend. Uh, Tobermory. Um, and I hope I'm going to try to share my screen so that I can share a few other. Um, this will stop others sharing screen. Is that okay, Tatiana, if I share my screen? Uh, yes, uh, yes uh, Teresa will tell you. Will uh, this one. Okay, so yeah, so here we have one of the anchors. This is of the WL Wetmore in Tobermory, Ontario. Uh, she lies in about 18 feet of water or so, um, and it's one of my favorite spots to photograph because you can see that beautiful light shining through. Um, here's a piece that I submitted to the gallery. This is a moray eel that I shot at night in Bonaire. Right before COVID, um, I literally got home from Bonaire on March 9th, um, and my underwater photos I'm absolutely obsessed with and this was one of my favorites. Um, this next one as well, I, um, I submitted this one. Uh, some people have told me that it looks kind of like an ultrasound, um, and I think that's really neat. The black and white just brought such a really interesting effect to this. Uh, here's a little dinghy, also in Bon Air at night. Um, what happens with underwater photography is you, you lose all of your light, um, so shooting at night able to provide artificial light, which is very exciting to me. Um, here is the poster girl of Tobermory. This is the sweepstakes. Um, if you've ever been to Tobermory, you've likely visited her. She is the most visited shipwreck in all of Canada. And again, that lighting at around noontime on the sweepstakes is just brilliant. Actually, this was around 4 p.m., not noon, my bad. Um, oh, one more there. If I can make it go back to that one. Here we go. Um, this is a small porcupine fish. He's about this big. Um, <laughs> so uh, they're really cool to photograph and I always find that they have a cute little smile. Um, this one was also taken at night. Uh, my Instagram is Carly Underwater. My website is carlyunderwater.com and you can find me anything Carly Underwater online. And thank you so much for watching and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Next is a piece by one of our other panelists. I'll allow Ted to introduce himself. Ted, 
Ted, are you there? I am. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I wasn't actually, I, I sort of booked out of the whole uh, panel thing, but I could try saying something. <laughs> I guess uh, during this whole thing, I've gotten back into doing some small drawings. Uh, um, excuse me, Ted, we cannot see you. Can you turn your camera on, please? Uh, oh. So in the oh, left lower, there start, it is. start video. Okay. Okay. Left okay, lower start. corner, start video. I, I pressed it. It said start video. Why? What are you doing? Unable to start video. Okay. Are you starting? It says it's uh, unable to start. You can't because the host has stopped it. You guys have stopped it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sure. Okay. Well, maybe if that's okay with you, we can just hear what you're saying. Uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy. We will not be able to see you, but we see your piece on. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's okay. the more important stuff is the artwork, anyhow. I, okay. I, you don't want to see my ugly mug. Sorry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, basically, my favorite thing to draw on is these tiny little sketch pads that I buy, like by the box at uh, Curry's. Uh, you get 120 pads in these boxes, and I just draw like crazy. I start at one end like you're doing a, like you're writing, like dear so-and-so, I start at the uh, left end and move to the right. And these, all these are small sketchbooks. They're three by five inches, but open up to a drawing that's three by 10, sort of a diptych. Uh, yeah, I just find it a beautiful way to pass time, very meditative for me, all sorts of interior psychological debris comes out uh, it's lovely i get a, a beautiful discharge every time i do a drawing and uh even though i didn't plan to do this i guess thanks for giving me the opportunity i guess the message didn't get out there so i'm just winging it here i am there's my work uh please zoom in closer to get better looks at it if you do visit the website because well the photos aren't my best but you'll get a better idea if you get in close there's a lot of delicate little uh twisty uh marks there that you don't see so close up. Anyhow, thank you for the opportunity and I'm going to say goodbye and thanks everybody. Thanks very much, Ted. You're welcome. Goodbye. All right, our next piece is called Versace Gatorade by Jasmine Mujovinik. This piece is mixed media on panel board. All proceeds from the sale of this work, minus deductions for AFC, will be donated to Holding Space Yoga, GoFundMe, We Are Tired. All donations donated to Black Lives Matter Toronto and Grassroots Law the Action PAC. Our next piece by artist Ryan Watson is called 00220 WTSN. This is a digital image. This image is a part of an ongoing series of abstract expressionist photography. Digital photos manipulated to resemble paintings, which are then printed on canvas. Ryan's second piece, 00534 WTSN, is also a digital image. This image is part of his series, Abstract Expressionist Photography. For more of his work, please visit his website, watsonartphotography.com, or his Instagram, WTSNArtPhoto. Our next piece is by artist David Golden. This piece is untitled. It is acrylic on board. David's second piece is also entitled. This is Acrylic on Board. Our next piece is by artist Anna Lang Frazier. This is called D Letter Form. This piece is print media. Through this series, Anna explores the structural relationship between topography and architecture through her personal style. 
Based on her understanding and exploration in drafting and graphic design, she approaches a new perspective of how two different disciplines, such as architecture and topography, can be collaborated into a unique hybrid design. Anna's second piece, other singular letter forms of choice may also be made into posters. This piece is print media. If you visit our website, you can click the video link to see more. This next piece is by artist John Carter, Fall Falling Leaves. This piece is sculpting clay, hand molded leaves, leaves, acrylic paint, gel, ink, varnish, resin on canvas. This series, Fall, is fine art, multimedium, and photography. Canvas embossed Canadian leaves with raised sculpting clay leaves. Additional fall works and digital prints are available. John's second piece is called Fall Trees, Colored Leaves. This piece is a set of six. It is sculpting clay hand molded leaves leaves, acrylic paint, gel, ink, varnish, and resin on canvas. Our next piece is by one of our panelists. I'd like to welcome Francis to speak. Hey, what do you know? It worked. Um, everybody hear me okay? Yes. Good. Okay. Uh, so hi, my name is Francis Livingston. Um, I have been a member of IATSE 873 since 98. Um, working in the construction department. I primarily work on set these days have for the last couple of years now. I've worn a lot of different hats uh, in the course of my life. I've been a long distance trucker. I've been a ranch hand um, cabinet maker, professional painter for a bit. Um, but the hat that I most identify with is as a photographer, which is a side a lot of people don't even know about me. I've been doing um, photography since I was 17 years old. It's been the one kind of constant in my life. And um, there's, there's, no, there's no end in sight. Now, truth be known, I was a bit hesitant about submitting this image in, in, into competition because um, flowers are a pretty hackneyed subject. And, it, you know, who can top George O'Keefe, you know, who's doing these gorgeous sensual flower paintings back in the 40s of the last century. The one thing that is a bit different, that's a bit fresh, um, is that I'm using a digital technique um, called focus stacking, which allows one to represent photographically things like flowers uh, in a way that was never previously possible. In the days of analog photography, you couldn't get this close to a subject and get everything sharp from the front to the back. Um, it just wasn't possible. Laws of optics didn't allow it back then and still don't allow it now. But with the advent of digital photography and computers, there became a workaround. And so this photograph is comprised of uh, about 40 different images. And with every image, I cheated the focus just a little bit forward and a little bit forward and a little bit forward until I'd covered the full range of the depth of the flower, and then I fed it into my computer, and a piece of software looked at every photo and took out the sharp parts and threw away the fuzzy parts and then recombined it back into a finished image which, in which everything is sharp. Um, and so for the first time, let's say within the last decade or so, it's possible to reproduce things like flowers um, in the way that we think we see them with our eyes. So the other thing about this photograph is it was taken with a very high resolution camera. So I can easily print this four foot by six foot. And it is a dream of mine that someday I'll have a show where I can afford to, you know, make up 20 or 30 prints at four foot by six foot and uh, fill a gallery with them. I, I find flowers just incredibly beautiful and nature for me has always been a touchstone. Um, it's kept me going through some really difficult times. I think that's all I can really say about that one. Um, uh, thank you. Yeah, I was going to say, on to the next. One of the ongoing series that I've been working on 
since I came back to Ontario with seasons. I, I lived on the West Coast for a time and there really isn't much in the way of seasons out there. And there certainly isn't the color of seasons. And so I, um, when I came back to Ontario and, and uh, started working in the film industry, I, uh, every fall I go out and I, and I photograph. And I just try to um, represent the beauty that I find in nature and that I find in seasons. And this was a, just a happy accident. It was, uh, I was up near Collingwood and driving back and it was uh, a first snow of the winter. Well, it was still late fall, but it was the first snow of the season. And it was a heavy wet snow that was sort of sticking to everything. And I just saw this scene of these uh, uh, larics um, holding their color against a background of everything just kind of sticky. And I love the graphic quality of it. I think that's really all I can say about it. Um, I have other work. Now you'd think I'd have a website, but I don't. It's coming is all I can say. It's been coming for a while. Um, I do have work though on a website called lensculture.com. If you go to lensculture.com and search Francis Livingston, uh, a number of uh, my exhibitions that I've submitted into that into them through in competition will be on the projects page and you can see other work I have. And I also have a show opening in Bancroft in October, God willing, um, that e e explores the theme of winter. It's sort of the one, it explores the theme of winter. I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, I'm gonna express my thanks as well to all the hard work that everybody has put into uh, creating this. I only really start to get a sense of it yesterday when we did the trial rehearsal of how much work goes on behind the scenes to make something like this happen. Thanks very much. I'm done. Okay, thank you very much, Francis. On to our next artist, another panelist, Ashley. Hi, everybody. Hope you can hear me okay. Um, my name is Ashley Tukesher. I'm a scenic artist here in Toronto in the film and television industry. Um, I've been working as a scenic for the past 10 years of my life. And um, in 2009, I received my Bachelor of Fine Arts degree from the University of Regina in Saskatchewan, which is where I'm originally from. And during the COVID-19 quarantine, I've had the opportunity to work on my artwork and specifically experimenting with a new medium for me, which is watercolor. Um, generally, I work uh, acrylic or oil on canvas, and uh, it's certainly a challenging medium as there isn't a ton of room for error. Uh, so it's helped me embrace uh, little happy accidents and building layers on top of those to create depth. Um, so the piece that you're seeing now is called Trick or Treat, and it's just my ode to Halloween night. Halloween's my favorite holiday. And I just wanted to evoke the feeling of darkness and excitement that you feel as a child, putting on your costume and becoming that persona. Uh, next, we have Whirlpool. And I'll just talk a little bit about how I created this piece. Um, so basically I just laid out the paper and I did a lot of washes of watercolor. So wet on wet technique just creating shapes and marks. And then as I was looking at the piece, uh, different images started to pop out and then I started fine tuning them. Um, also putting the watercolor um, vertically and letting the drips happen as well. And I would describe this piece as a surrealist dreamscape. And I wanted to create an open-ended narrative for the viewer to explore and finish the story for themselves. Um, some imagery and motifs that are reoccurring in my work are images of plant life, trees, human anatomy, and a variety of things that are macabre and eerie in nature. Um, so next year I will have a solo show at Girard Art Space here in Toronto um, next April. So I'm starting to get ready for that. And some of the works that you see in my studio will be in that show. And feel free to check out my website, uh, www.ashleytukesher.com. And also my Instagram, at Ashley Tukesher. I update them both quite frequently. And um, now I'm just gonna show you the two pieces that are in the show. They're both for sale and they're professionally framed and behind art glass. So I'll just 
move this forward for you. And uh, I'm currently working out of my home studio in the beaches in Toronto. So this is where I've been working. Um, this is an acrylic piece that I'm working on, acrylic on linen. And I'll just do a little spin for you. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, thanks for everyone who put on the exhibition and all the artists involved. Thanks. Thanks very much. That was great. I really enjoyed it. Our next piece is by another one of our panelists. Hey there. <laughs> um, can you hear me or no? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, my name is Neville Hadfield. Uh, I'm a scenic artist in 873. And um, uh, I had the opportunity uh, put past me to to contribute um, to this to this, uh, to this show and to this cause. Um, so I decided to get my artistic uh, juices flowing again and create something. Um, I have I have quite a long history uh, in the arts. Um, I used to uh, work on Queen Street. As an artist um, uh, preparator, I used to work um, in in uh, the, the TDSB uh, at uh, Central Tech as as a uh, as a sculpture uh, night school um, teacher's assistant in the uh, in the in the bronze foundry. So I've been I've been working with my hands and, and doing sculpture for a very long time uh, through my sort of journey with this, I've, uh, I've, I've, I've done a, a lot of, of, uh, of uh, figurative things and, and, uh, and, and working, working with clay and wax, um, but I've broken away from that with this. Um, this is sort of a appeal from, from some of the things that I've done. Uh, I feel like I was inspired fairly heavily by uh, uh, so like the earth artists. Um, there's a uh, Robert Smithson from the 70s, who uh, did a few really influential pieces, um, the, the Spiral Jetty and uh, like, uh, Half Buried um, Woodshed, I think it's called. And those explored sort of uh, um, uh, man and earth, and, uh, and they sort of ju juxtaposed, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, order versus entropy and, and very various things like that. Uh, so with this with this piece here, um, I had the intention of, of finding something beautiful in, in nature, and as I was walking uh, out to do that, I found these these two pieces of stone. Uh, and these pieces of stone I felt related to each other, um, and and as I played with them, they they really did. I found I found an unnatural balance uh, of of how they would you would not find them standing up like this in nature. And that was interesting to me. And then with the, with the further contrast between uh, grayscale and, and color with the, with the paper going through them, a further contrast of, of uh, the sort of uh, more uh, lasting nature of stone versus the, the, uh, the more ephemeral quality of, of paper. There was just so many um, very interesting uh, sort of juxtapositions or contrasts uh, in, in making this piece. Um, uh, organic shape versus uh, geometric shape, color versus grayscale. There's just so many, so many things that, that, are, that are at odds, which um, I find to be uh, a, a theme in, in much of my work um, is, is to, to, to show uh, a contrast um, as as we see it, uh, it every day in our lives. Uh, we we see we see built versus natural, and this this also has that element in it. Anyhow, um, 
uh, that's that's what this that's what this series to me is about. Um, I, I'm really uh, grateful for the opportunity um, and for the sort of kick in the artistic pants to get this uh, get this going again. Um, so uh, you can see some of my art um, that that I've made uh, both um, in 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 private and and as a as a professional in, in the union uh, on my on my website. Uh, Neville Hadfield dot uh, WordPress dot com. Um, I I thank you very much for the opportunity, and I think that's that's all I that I can I can say about my my work. Thank you. Thanks very much, Neville. Back to Teresa. Our next piece is called Laura by Aurora Crook. This is oil on campus. For more of Aurora's work please visit auroracrook.com. Our next piece is by another one of our panelists. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. Okay, great, thanks. Hi, I'm Jerry Gillen. I'm a costumer uh, and a painter. The two paintings I have in the show are part of an ongoing series in which I'm weaving into my abstract paintings some fiber handling techniques such as uh, folding and dyeing and uh, net making. Uh, here's one I'm working on right now. Uh, I grew up on Prince Edward Island and I learned from my grandfather who was a lobster fisherman how to knit the nets used in the lobster traps and um, both uh, this is a knitting needle and both the needle and uh, the twine that I'm using come from a commercial fishing supply on PEI near my grandfather's farm. So my process, I can tell you a little bit about that. I always start with uh, a raw textile. Um, in this case for these paintings, it's natural linen. So I'm folding it, um, twisting it, and binding it up with the uh, netting knots to create um, a one-off resist pattern on the fabric. So it looks sort of like this when I do it, and there's some of the knots, if you can see that. Um, it's kind of like tie dyeing technique, uh, but instead of using fabric dye, I'm like dipping and immersing the wrapped cloth in either watercolor or acrylic paint or some combination thereof. Um, afterwards, I remove the twine and open up the wet cloth and that reveals the image that I'm gonna work with. Um, so then I, have to, I sit with it uh, to find the spirit of the painting. Uh, a dialogue forms between what is seen and what's on scene. I have to decide uh, what to enhance, what to hide, um, and then through painting successive layers on that, um, constantly searching for the right vibration between light and color. So my aim in this process is to be curious and open to whatever messages might unfold in that. Um, so the first painting, um, called Follow Your Heart. Thank you. Uh, the message for me here was that uh, I'm on the right path and what I need to do is just keep going. I need to keep painting. That the energy is both radiating out and it's also coming together. And the second painting is called Through the Passage. Um, this one's almost ceremonial for me. I've been using this motif, the flower of life, a lot in my artwork. It's the, it's the ring pattern. It's a simple but sacred design that starts with a, a seed and, and grows outward. It's kind of like a net. Uh, and it reminds me that there's, there's unity in everything and, and we're all connected. So that's just a wee glimpse into my art. If anybody wants to know more about my paintings, I'm on Instagram. Uh, it's just my name, Jerry Gillen. 
Thanks. Thanks very much, Jerry. That was great. Our next piece is by artist Jenny Simkowski. This piece is called Richie Spice. This is charcoal on black artigan paper. Jenny's second piece is called The Fire That Remains. This piece is charcoal on black artigan paper. For more of Jenny's work, please visit her Instagram, J underscore Senko. Our next piece is by artist Gina Hamilton. This piece is called Scape. This is a photograph. After a career as a set decorator, Gina is now spending more time in the country. Growing and photographing vegetables is her new passion. These are some of the results. Gina's second piece is called Tomato. This is also a photograph. For more of Gina's work, please visit her Instagram, Gina Hamilton Design. Next piece is by artist Natalie Lockwin. This piece is called Twilight Green. This is acrylic and ink on canvas board. Twilight Green, pandemic deserted spaces have a magical quality. At night, creatures emerge to hunt, play, and care for their young. Our reappearance is chaos. For more, please visit her Instagram, Artie West. Our next piece is by panelist Stephanie Avery. Hey, can you guys see and hear me? Yes. Excellent. All right, well, hi, I'm Stephanie Avery. I'm in set deck, and I am also a multidisciplinary artist. I have a degree in visual art from York University, and I was recently one of the artists in residence at the Museum of Contemporary Art here in Toronto. Um, a lot of my work explores our relationships with spaces, how we interact with them, what they say about us, and how they can be manipulated. This interest is actually probably why I was so drawn to set deck. Uh, but in my art, I like to use humor and absurdity to intervene with familiar objects and imagery to give them new meanings and narratives. My ultimate goal is to inspire different perspectives and initiate critical dialogue about elements of contemporary culture that we tend to take for granted. Um, in the case of this body of work, which I call my ad hack painting series, I physically tear ads out of magazines and paint directly on them. There is no Photoshop here. This is paint on paper. Um, I paint these sort of strange creatures interacting with the products and models and ads. Or um, if you scroll to the next one, Teresa, give the models entire facelifts. Uh, this is my way of critiquing and subverting the nefarious aspects of our consumer culture. As advertisements become more ubiquitous, both in our public and personal slash digital spaces, I think it's really important we be aware of and resilient to their often insidious tactics, especially in the face of our globally unsustainable consumer habits. I think, or at least I hope, that by using humor to intervene with the original narratives, I'm not just disarming the ads, I'm also pointing out how absurd and ridiculous ads can be, even without my alterations. Um, now, uh, Teresa, I'd really love to share my screen and show everybody a few more examples of my work. Sure. Thanks. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> um, so here's just a few more examples. I have tons of these. Um, I don't really plan things out in advance. I really like to let the ads inspire me. Once I get started, my brush kind of takes over and I'm often surprised and amused by the results. I start the process with a white Sharpie paint marker, drawing and filling in an outline of what I think I have in mind. And then I go over it with the watercolor paint. I really love the fine details that I can get and it actually bonds surprisingly well to the magazine paper. 
Uh, I could go on and on with these, but I should probably leave time for the rest of the artists. But if you want to keep going down this rabbit hole, you can find more of my work on my Instagram, which is Steph Von Awesome, which is also on the off-camera website. Or actually, if you happen to be in the Queen and Ossington area, you can see two of my large-scale ad hack paintings in real life, which is kind of a rare treat these days. Uh, they're painted on salvaged street ads, kind of like what you would see in a bus shelter, and they're on display, ironically, in the east-facing window of the Shoppers Drug Mart. So check them out if you are nearby. Um, thank you guys so much. It's great to see all the talent here, and enjoy the rest of the night. All right, thank you, Seth. Thanks. Our next piece is by panelist Frank Perna. Hi, everybody. Let's see, I'm going to switch to the big screen here. I'm not getting the video, anyway. Uh, Frank, is your video off? Oh, there you go. There I am, okay, I'm gonna switch to that. Okay, uh, what I'm showing here, the slight adjustment, is uh, a piece that the, the digital piece that's on the website is just one example of. This is a, a video installation entitled Wet Worlds. Um, first of all, I'm local 873 since 1999, been in the film industry since 91, and a scenic artist, and I help co-organize with Scott Dene uh, uh, off-camera at Filmport, which was about 18,000 square feet. Uh, it was the biggest uh, studio space in North America at the time. And uh, 64 artists, including DGC and IATSE. So Wet Worlds uh, was a piece I, I mounted during Nuit Blanche Blanc uh, during, uh, in October. I was gonna mount it again in April during a, a tribute to Earth Week, but of course we had a pandemic. So I hope to mount it again in October, if not, perhaps in April. Uh, Wet Worlds is a, a glacially long 38 hour uh, loop. It's two projections, but both projections are identical. Uh, the difference being uh, one of them is upside down or inverted and moving in the opposite direction chrono chronologically so that at a certain point in the uh, viewing, they will sync up to a mirror image, which is fun, but mostly it's about the contrast between the wide variety of images, which are slowed down in a big way and faded in and out of each other. So the top is the bottom and the bottom is the top. Uh, the soundtrack, uh, which is faintly in the background here, it was on four speakers, two channels, hour and a half soundtrack versus hour and a 15 minutes. So they play off each other, not unlike the visual. They fade in and out of each other in a random uh, fashion. Uh, that's what it's all about to me. Uh, the piece was uh, made up north in Apsley, Ontario at my cottage where I poured endless uh, thinned out variations of paint uh, in a very random loose fashion with no intention except to pull out my camera and see what happened, pick out areas uh, and link them together in a very slow down affair. I am looking for large walls, large white walls to mount this on in the future, indoor or outdoor. Um, it was mounted at St. Anne's Church, which is a, a new Byzantine church. I'd encourage everyone to go visit uh, Gladstone and Dundas. And it features early, early group of seven painters before they were group of seven. And uh, the people there are very LGBT friendly and open to artists, various artworks. I hope to show this with a possible uh, string ensemble or if not, I'll, I'll just uh, take my friends and do another ambient soundtrack. The soundtrack was comprised of slowing down a lot of media, especially classical music and uh, vinyl, everything from Robin Trower to God knows what, including uh, Hildegard von Bingham, 11th century mystic, and a friend of mine, Chantal Thompson, who did some vocal work, layered upon layered by a friend of mine, Longo Hai. And uh, yeah, that's the piece. It's uh, it, it suggests uh, alchemical catastrophe in a way um, versus naturally occur occurring environmental 
elements. So it can be taken uh, either or way. Uh, my main thing is seeing the juxtaposition of the top and the bottom. What you're starting to see right now is it's about to sync up. I got it luckily there. And in a few seconds, it's going to be the mirror uh, out of about 38 hours of uh, media. And uh, what else can I say? Um, it's sort of a meditation. Uh, people can see it you know, in an extended long sitting or just come in and out. Uh, when it was at St. Anne's Church, it was mounted on a 20 by 20 foot scrim so that you could basically walk into it and be surrounded by it, or you could sit at the back and then observe it. And here it is just syncing up. We're kind of, I kind of got lucky here. And that's, uh, that's basically uh, my piece and my work. Thank you very much, Frank. Okay, that's it. Our next piece is by artist Francesca Valente. This piece is called La Slater. This is a digital painting with a limited series of prints. Our next piece is called True North by artist Constant Lang. This is Vera Eglamis, reversed gilded glass, moon gold leaf, white gold leaf, 22 karat gold leaf, silver leaf. This piece is not for sale. This reverse gilded compass rose keeps her centered on her personal true north. Constance's second piece is called Dufin's Creek Watershed. This piece is reverse gilded glass, moon gold leaf, white gold leaf, 22 karat gold leaf, silver leaf. This piece is also not for sale. This is a topographical contour map of the Dufins Creek watershed that flows from the glacial moraine in her town of Uxbridge down to Lake Ontario. It travels through the contested Pickering Airport lands. For more of her work, please visit her Instagram, Constant Lang, or her website, constantlang.com. This next piece is by artist Sarah Elizabeth McCaw. This piece is called Scenes from Quarantine. Shirtless Taylor drinks a white claw out front. This piece is made from resin, metallic pigment, and paint. A small snapshot of the artist's life in COVID TO. Here is Taylor's shirtless as he drinks a white claw in the front yard of their Bloordale apartment. The sculpture was created by McCaw during her season of pandemic hiatus. Her Instagram is McCobbler. Our next piece is by artist Ed Krupa. This piece is called I Spy. This is an archival photographic paper print. Please visit his website, ecrupaphotography.com, for more of his work. Ed's second piece is titled Postcard. This piece is archival photographic paper print. Next, I'd like to welcome another one of our panelists, Mark Manchester. Mark, are you there? I am, I'm just trying to figure it out. I started my video, but I'm not seeing myself. We see you, Mark. Oh, do you? Okay, cool. All right, um, hey everybody. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a Rick Mercer here. I'm walking out of the kitchen and into the yard where I'm going to my new space created during COVID. Uh, I call it the Cedar Side Studio. So that's, oops, my finger on it. That's it. It's uh, all cedar that was reclaimed stuff from, from actually from work, from boards that we use underneath our, um, 
Mark, you oh. said, Mark, we lost the video. Okay, hang on. You're back. Am I back? Yeah, yeah I must have touched something. Sorry. Anyhow, um, so th there I am in in the yard. This is this is one of the the pieces I finally decided to blow it up a little bigger than it was. This this piece may have been purchased. I'm hoping there was some interest expressed. Um, mostly, photography for me has been a, a a link up. It's a way that I connect my eye to the world that we see and to how we start to put things in frames and about composition and about color and about emotion. All the things that Stevie Myers so beautifully touched on um, is stuff that I, I find that I'm doing and but I find I work really fast. I'm doing it really quick. Um, I shoot really quick. I was using small digital cameras for a while. <clears throat> the last of which was a Canon S100. I've retired all of them, and now I'm just shooting with my, with my iPhone XS, which I find the quality ex exceptional. And of course, you can do so many things. You, you can share, you can, you can get into editing and stuff like that. Again, when I edit, I edit very, very fast. My inspiration for photography in this fashion was a French photography, photographer named Henri Cartier-Bresson who worked principally, he started in the 30s and finished kind of 50s and 60s, but he was famous for capturing a, a moment in time. So he carried it with him a very small camera all the time. He didn't shoot large format at all. And, um, and his stuff is absolutely brilliant. Um, I have been, over time, sharing my stuff on a regular basis with my fellow crew. Uh, on an, often night by night, just stuff that I see, light that comes in through a window, or or someone um, engaged in um in in a in a in a bit of their work. <clears throat> I have to be very careful, of course, because I'm not supposed to shoot on sets, but I and also very careful that I'm respectful of whoever I do shoot. If I do shoot somebody and, and want to post it, I, I ask them first. But I'm but I find I find the work that we do so engaging in the and and even the body forms that people take in the process of what of how we do our work is so engaging. Uh, make a long story endless. That's it. Thank you very, very much everybody for including me in off camera. Um, I'm, I'm so pleased and proud to be here and so uh, immersed in uh, all the other art that I've seen tonight and over the last couple of days by by friends um, and now I'm meeting I'm going to be meeting new friends I'll be seeing these I'll be seeing your names I'll, I'll run into you on the set please come over and say hi and, and we'll engage have a great evening and we'll talk to you soon Mark night, night. can we just uh, can we just have another quick look of the photo because you're uh, yeah if you can just show us a little bit more I really love that photo because it reminds me it reminds me Oops, sorry, I'm losing my iPad. Uh, to, me, it, to me, it looks like birds, like uh, cranes in, in a swamp. It, it just feels so surreal, you know, that, that sort of juxtaposure of uh, this uh, contemporary, uh, the machines and, and the softness of, of the sky. You know, I, uh, <laughs> I, I really I like that. This. You're doing a way better job than I did. <laughs> yeah, okay, we'll, we'll talk about it next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Mark, very much. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thanks. Have a great evening. Our next piece is by artist Andrew Lindell. This piece is part one of two. It's entitled Two Spirits. This piece is pigmented caribou antlers and forged iron. Part two to Andrew's piece, Two Spirits, pigmented caribou antlers. This piece is sold as a set.
Next is a piece called Abate Your Goliaths by James van der Klein. This is modified gypsum, fiberglass, steel, wood, leather, fur, feathers, rope, oil, and acrylic color. In pursuit of exploring the monolithic, this oversized piece often had the artist investigating those obstacles that present themselves as insurmountable. This next piece by James is called Forget Me Not. This piece is silicone, fiberglass, polyurethane, steel, hair, and color. This piece is not for sale. The, this portrait attempts to portray an earlier people. The process indulged notions of history, genesis, simplicity, and survival. For more of James' work, please visit his website, jamesbdk.com. Next, we have a piece by Kirk Pryor. This piece is called Optimistic. This is wood, steel, concrete, and paint. Kirk's next piece is called Drawn Away. This is wood, steel, concrete, and paint. For more of his work, please visit kwpryordesign.com or his Instagram, KWP Design. Next is a piece by Naomi Vanderteams. This piece is called Rough Land. It's acrylic medium. This piece to the artist represents the flow in movement and nature, specifically the way waves hit dry sand and rocks and create a splash that washes away quicker than it has arrived. Naomi's second piece is called Feathers. This is an acrylic medium. Feathers is an acrylic painting. This piece was for the artist because she, fun for the artist because she used an actual feather to create the strokes and a string of yarn to create the lines. For more of this artist's work, please visit Dartist Naomi on Facebook. This next piece is by Tamara Herod. This piece is called South Shore Kuai. This is watercolor on paper. Tamara's second piece is called Buffalo Pond, watercolor on canvas. This next piece is by Blythe Tuju. This piece is untitled. It is acrylic on canvas and not for sale. The artist has worked in the film industry for around 20 years. Independently, they have always worked in the art field and most jobs they've taken required their art skills. They were thrilled when they began to work in oil. The paintings they are showing are part of a series that have been, they have been working on for some time. This next piece, also by Blythe, is called Untitled. It is also acrylic on canvas and not for sale. For more of this artist's work, please visit their site on Facebook, Blythe Spirit. The next artist is Patrick Pryor. His piece is called Kudu Horns. This is lost wax, cast bronze, black granite base. Patrick's second piece is called Big Horn Horns. This is lost wax, cast bronze, and black granite base. Next piece is by artist Alexandra Manella. This is Hot Synthesis. In her series, she uses imagery from fashion magazines to create strange compositions that embody the issues, expectations, and complexities facing women. Magazines tend to propagate certain ideals and her images are meant 
to be critical with a dash of humor. To be a woman is empowering and frustrating, and our identities are always evolving. Manipulating images that try to manipulate her is a transformation, taking back some control while synthesizing something new. Next is a piece by Julia Willey. This piece is called Dreaming of Becoming and is a charcoal drawing. The woman was already waiting for the artist in the paper. This piece is not for sale. This next piece, also by Julia, is called Once Upon the Time in America. This piece is photo montage and digital image. It is not for sale. Everybody talks about the crazy times we are in, though nobody realized how crazy. Next piece is by another one of our panelists. I'll invite Sophie to take the floor. Hello, can you see me? Yes. Hi. Hello. My name is Sophie Vertigan and I'm a special effect coordinator in IATSE 873. I was born and raised in the UK and studied fine art at Manchester University. After emigrating to Canada, I found my way into the film industry and have only recently returned back to my art. I work in oil paint. I use my art as a way of expressing and exploring my emotions and psyche. Drawing on elements of my childhood and presenting my present day struggles. My art is often dark as I feel it's important to open and express sides of our psyche. I often say without dark there is no light. By acknowledging and categorizing my emotions, it enables me to give them a home on a canvas and no longer carry them inside me. This piece here on the website, I'm Not Afraid of the Dark, is about finding self-confidence in, one, in oneself. It's a bold statement directly against having been pressured to do nicer paintings. Um, and it's large and life size in order to aid its strong messages. This is who I am. And I have no shame or fear of the darker side of me or my physicality. Um, this painting here that I have right here is called Nature or Nurture. And I want to show it to you because I feel it's most related to my work in the film industry. Uh, as a special effects person and I think it talks about the seed of my career. Being raised by a single mother who worked in the film industry and as thus was really pre present. At seven years old I stepped into the role of the man of the house and I wired plugs, fixed appliances, found the forever lost keys and put out fires literally. Sadly, due to circumstances, I lacked in nurturing and never fully evolved, hence the not fully grown legs as shown here. These experiences have had a profound effect on my life and I feel have led me to the world of special effects and film, which is a wonderful world. I'm also interested in textures and open and often use my phot photographs to make a gleeky print for the background, which can be seen in this piece here. I can't help you where the print is actually of a bark from a tree in Aiken, South Carolina. And also in the piece I'm currently working on here called Climbing, which has four photographs here that are from Mexico, Cornwall, Jordan, and Ontario, and used in the expression of journey. It's truly wonderful to be part of a union and a family not only supports us in our work, but supports us in our true self as artists, and I really appreciate it. 
And I would very much like to thank our president, Angela, uh, Tatiana, Jasmine, and Teresa for their hard work. You can see my work at uh, sophievertigan.ca. And also I'm doing a art exhibition at the Women's Art Institute in Yorkville with a lovely lady called Diana Ledyshewski, who's also a member of our union. And that is going to be in November. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Over to you, Tatiana. Thank you very much, Sophie, uh, for your lovely uh, talk and uh, beautiful work. Thank you. Our next piece is by artist Derek Stevenson. This piece is called Forward. It is a digital photograph. This was taken on a Sunday at Playa Juncoal Beach in Costa Rica. Sunday is when the beach comes alive with all of the local families. Next piece is by Arnold K. Lackin. This piece is called City of Neighborhoods. It's photography and G. Clay print. Toronto is the city of neighborhoods. The artist celebrates the city with this collage of over 140 neighborhoods, each unique in their own way. Next artist is Branislav Dordovic. This piece is called Dance of the Clairvoyance. This is acrylics. For more, visit his Instagram, Branislav underscore Dodovic. His next piece is called Forging Atlas. Next piece is by artist Sarah Steele. This piece is called Desperado. This is acrylic painting on canvas. Sarah's second piece is called Night Moves, acrylic painting on canvas. For more of Sarah's artwork, please visit her website, sarahsteelart.com. Next piece is by artist Danielle Domeni. This piece is called Lake Russo Sunset View. This is mixed media plaster, acrylic, wax, epoxy on wood and panel, wood panel. This piece is not for sale. This piece is inspired by the view from her family cottage location. The first layer was sculpted with plaster to enhance the immersive quality of the water, built up with multiple layers of liquid wax and acrylic paint, separating stages of the image with epoxy for greater depth. Next is by another one of our panelists. Hello. Hello. Hi. Yeah, we can see you. Okay. Uh, hi, my name is Rita Koleva. I'm a member of IATS 873, wardrobe department, and I work there as a cutter and costume builder. Uh, I do mostly like period moves, something that's really challenging. In my spare time, I like to do wearable art pieces, jewelry, and um, accessories. My last passion is felting. I started with that about two years ago, and uh, I already managed to get first place in the international felting competition called uh, Felt Art. Mm. Basically, I create the cloth out of fiber pieces that look like that. I don't know if anybody see it. And uh, I mix the pieces together, uh, the fibers together until they create the whole picture. I spray it with water and soap. And after that, when it shrinks, it becomes a cloth. So I can do also different uh, textures. And uh, 
with different weights. So this piece that is on the screen, it's made out of probably, I don't know, 50 colors of uh, wool. Here is something that is different texture. You can make sculptures. And this one here, here is like a sculpt this is too, but stitched to the bag that they also made. Well, basically that's it. Uh, Rita and Teresa, mm -hmm. I'm really sorry to, uh, I just, I would love to see a little close up on what Rita was talking. Is it possible to put uh, her screen close up when she's showing with her hands the yarn and the piece? I didn't really see it because the, the main screen was on. Would it be possible to do it one more time, please? Yeah, here. I don't know if you see it now. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Now we see it on a large screen. Show us again, please. And then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So here I use about 50. And move the camera a little slower. Just, uh, 50 colors. Wool. Yeah. And it took me about a month to make something like that. So, this, so is this is called actually like a, a. Is this actually a sculptural piece? Is it? Is no, it, no. This is a flat. Piece and the, the technique is uh, painting with wool technique. The sculpture piece is probably this one. I don't know if you see it. It's made in yeah. the way that the uh, hats are made. So this is a different wool. It's a little bit heavier. And this one here is also a sculpture piece that um, I made first after the, the roses out of uh, felt and I stitched them there. So we have more textures here. Like lace looking felt. I don't know, it's a, such a interesting technique. This is more, it's more with holes. This here. And the material I'm doing it is like, it's a wool robbing like that. So the wool is soft and then once you put it in a place you press it or what do you use? Is there? Oh what I do, I mix the colors together like that. Hold on, I have to mix the color together. After that I put some water and soap on them and roll it in a bubble wrap. So when the pieces are wet and uh, covered with soap they shrink and they tangle together. So they create cloth this way. It's very like environmentally uh, good thing. And uh, I don't know, creates a beautiful. Great. Thank, thank, is, you. Basically. thank you very much, Rita. It's really interesting to yeah. see this uh, the different ways, uh, different ways how to use wool and, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, some color, some, te uh, uh, some textures. Thank you for the demonstration. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not painted. <laughs> Just mix together. So I want to thank everybody for organizing that and for the support that we got. Thank you. Bye bye. The final piece in this. It's called, is called Legalize Melanin by artist Daniel Vasquez. This piece says, repetition is the name of the game. This artist was inspired by Andy Warhol's work. The poster of, of a German protester inspired the artist. Her poster saying Legalize Melanin really sold the artist on creating this series. He will be reproducing this piece and posting it all over the GTA. Uh, thank you very much, Teresa, for your help with presenting all the artists. Actually, uh, it's, I would like you to stay on that poster that you just had. Uh, as we are now coming to, and just quickly scroll over the few posters when I read uh, about, uh, I just want to say, uh, uh, first of all, thank you to all the artists who were showing in the show and who were presenting. It was wonderful to hear 
uh, from everybody. Uh, so the off camera uh, is actually an ongoing visual art exhibition that has been produced in Toronto by a Yassi 873 members since 2007. Uh, and uh, it was initiated by late Patricia Chart, who was a scenic member of Yassi 873. And uh, it, uh, it, it was, the idea was to showcase the creative talent behind the scenes and off camera. But uh, this uh, artists who are instrumental for the success of film industry in Canada. Uh, the, another one of, so these are some of the posters, but we also have a print from the newspapers uh, from Toronto Star. So off camera actually was uh, covered with uh, media and newspapers. And uh, the picture uh, in the Toronto Star of, uh, uh, of the off camera were actually, um, I'm just waiting for you to come to that image of the, of the uh, newspaper. So the, uh, the, the image in, in, in the Toronto Star, uh, it was uh, here. So there's three pictures, I think, from Toronto Star. Those pictures were actually by Tom Sandler. Who was uh, who is a, a news journalist, a photographer, uh, who has been with off camera all along, uh, covering our events, uh, beside other events as well. And um, we would like. Uh, he also has been involved uh, and connected with the film industry um, since its early days. So we are now. Uh, I would like to present Tom Sandler and invite him to uh, come and say a few words. Hi, Tom. Hi, Hi. Th and thank you all very much for uh, uh, including me in this. Uh, I'm sort of an outsider, but uh, it's been a fabulous uh, presentation. And um, I, I really like this uh, way of doing things because uh, you see so much work and you see uh, and you get to know the work and you get to see and meet so many artists and uh, focus on their work. Uh, I find it, you know, even better than a live event because um, y y you can really focus on everything, and and it's a good way of doing things. The new technology is working, and uh, even though people are not physically close together, uh, you feel very close with everybody, and you feel like you really connect with people. So this is a this is a great. Uh, it's very encouraging and inspiring for the future. Uh, the newspapers. I shot the social page for the Toronto Star for a number of years until they started shrinking down and they started having to drop their features. And um, that was unfortunate, but uh, there had to be something to replace it. And this is something that's, uh, like I said, very encouraging uh, to see. And uh, I've been, um, I, I have some images I can show you. I've been a freelance photographer for probably about the past almost 30 years and I was at the beginning of uh, just about everything that started in Toronto culturally and socially and um, I was official or photographer for uh, the Giller Prize. I, I was shooting TIFF for at least 17 years for various media outlets, uh, The Hollywood Reporter, um, uh, Variety Magazine, uh, Screen Magazine. But I can, what I can do is I can show you a few. I, I found myself in a position where I started out as an animation photographer and then I got this great job being the official photographer for the Toronto waterfront. And I spent 10 years there shooting and documenting everything, the old warehouses, all the changes before Harborfront was, was built. And it was a fantastic job. And I found myself as a, a documentary photographer and I made a lot of connections there. And what I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna uh, bring up some images to share with you just quickly. And I'll uh, just give you a sense of some of the things I've done. If you can just bear with me for a second. Um, I have to bring them up here. Uh, hang on. Let's see, here we go. All right, I'm gonna just, uh, whoops. Uh, while you're doing this, Tom, I'm just going to say something that I find really interesting. Uh, that yes. The uh, photographer, official photographer of the Queen and uh, royal family when they were in uh, That's right. And, you know, uh, having them actually uh, have the Queen uh, at a film for, film for studio trying out the 3D. Uh, yes. 
technology. Uh, that was one of my favorite. <laughs> I have that, I have that image and I'll show it to you in one sec. I'm going to bring them up right now and let's see if we can, let's see if we can bring this up. But here's a cool shot of uh, Nelson Mandela. I was uh, shooting one of his uh, uh, visits and um, uh, this was uh, a lot of uh, Pete Towns in the opening of Tommy. Uh, I, 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 I have a wide range of things. So this is a great shot of, uh, it looks like uh, uh, Walt Disney, but it's actually his uh, nephew. It's Roy Disney at the Disney Studios. And everybody was against me doing this shot with him for some reason, I don't know why. So I got, just went over to him and I said, I have a great idea, stick your head through the Mickey Mouse hole. <laughs> and he said, that's a great idea. And he did it and it turned out to be quite a nice shot. Uh, as I said, I go back a long ways with the film festival. This is uh, the three founders of the festival, Dusty Cole and uh, Hank uh, van der Kolk and, uh, and Bill Marshall. Sometimes it's just capturing, you know, important people to me was important and documenting the social and cultural life of the city. It's a nice little shot of David Cronenberg. He was shooting me and I was shooting him. Uh, this is the shot you were referring to, Tatiana, with, um, with the, can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, so this, thank you. It's quite a funny shot. Is uh, she looks like she's wearing a pair of shades, but she's actually wearing 3D glasses, and she's touring the Pinewood Studios to show the technology of the Canadian uh, uh, film industry. And uh, she's uh, she was very impressed. It's kind of a neat shot. You don't really see her very often with a pair of sunglasses on or 3D glasses on. Um, this is just some of my own personal stuff. I love shooting nature, and and I find it just so magical. This is just a cute little shot of a nest in a very low tree, a branch almost. Uh, this is another one of the royal visits with uh, Prince Charles doing, teaching him how to be a DJ at a charity in Toronto for kids to learn trades. Um, this is something I just liked. I just saw this moment. As a, actually, he's a friend of mine, just came back from ice fishing, shot on an iPhone. Uh, of course, Douglas Fairbanks Jr. This was the first job I ever had at the Canadian Film Centre. And I've been shooting there for, I guess, about 25 years or 20, yeah, 25 years. And that was the first gig I had with him and have, I, I became close and very good friends with Norman Jewison and was been friends with him ever since. Um, this was down in the harbour front days, uh, the waterfront. This is the oldest ship in the world. It was built in 1858. It was the original ship and uh, still sailing. But I thought it was kind of cool with the juxtaposition be between the, the, the technology of the CN Tower and the old technology of the, of the ship from 1858. So those are the moments I kind of look for that really excite me and I know that are important. Um, I shot this shot, this is an owl actually on a t-shirt and uh, I was walking through the wood, uh, forest one day and this owl flew right over my head and landed on a branch about 20 feet away from me and I had a camera with me. He just went, sat there until I took a couple of shots and then he flew away. And it was such a magical moment. I didn't know what it was all about until a few years later when I found out that a developer wanted to plow the, uh, uh, the, the forest under and the wetlands and build a housing development there. So I got involved with the organization that was trying to stop it. And I used that shot of the owl and made a t-shirt up and I, 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 I tagged it, uh, the forest is watching, which it is. And I happened to run into um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Kennedy, um, uh, Robert Kennedy Jr. at the Water Keepers Gala. So I, I, I presented him with one of the t-shirts and he, he was so glad to get, he held it up. We did a shot of it and it made the, big, made the local paper up in the area and it helped actually save the forest. So, uh, I find that photography and images can be very powerful and very uh, important, uh, obviously. This is some of my personal stuff I like to shoot. This is just some ice and snow on a dock. Um, I've been shooting the Giller Prize for, for about 25 years as one of the winners of the, of the Giller Prizes. And I just like documenting things. This was originally this is 1984 uh, down at the Toronto waterfront where the, the last of the late, the Maple Leaf Mills elevators were being brought down. And uh, the, the Toronto Star ran a series of four of these frames. I shot it as it was crashing to the ground uh, on still cameras. And uh, that was the first shot I ever had published actually. And it was quite an historic shot. And the, the sky cooperated. It was just fantastic. It's very dramatic.
Um, and this is a nice little shot of Norman uh, Jewison with his two sons. And uh, I like uh, I like connecting with people, and I like doing things for them that mean something to them as well as them them being important people and famous people and stuff like that. I try to shoot on different levels when I shoot. Uh, this is the last of the Massey family at Massey Hall, and uh, I shot the cover for the book on the 100th anniversary of Massey Hall, and they were all there for the book launch. So, uh, you know, I grabbed them all outside under the sign, and I thought that that was kind of an important moment. So I like doing uh, historic stuff. This is my own kind of, again, nature and environment. Uh, this was uh, Colin uh, Wilkinson and, uh, and Donnie Osmond at the opening of Joseph and the Technicolor uh, uh, dream coats. People like to do things for me when I shoot them. They don't feel very afraid when I shoot them. Uh, this was a, I, I used to shoot for the Red Barn Theater, and I don't know if any of you know about the Red Barn Theater. It was in Jackson's Point. It was the oldest summer stock theater in, in the country and they couldn't keep it going so they closed it down but i went on a campaign and um, i made this sign out of a piece of shirt cardboard and i used to carry it in my camera bag and every time i met somebody of uh, a celebrity i would pull the sign out of the bag and i would ask them if they would hold it to support the red barn theater and i got like 50 amazing shots of you this is graham green I got, we got Norman Jewis and Jan Arden, Mickey Dolans of the Monkees. Um, uh, just everybody cooperated with it. So it was a wonderful campaign. And uh, this is fun to do. Um, this is a little shot of Joseph Karsh that I that did and his wife. And I sent him a couple copies of the prints and he actually sent me back a nice letter and signed one of the prints for me. So that was quite an honor to do. And this goes way back. If you recognize this character, that's Wolfman Jack. And that was at the uh, um, uh, Can Can uh, Canada Music Week, Canadian Music Week. I just think things are important to do. This was a nice moment on the water where these geese were in front of the uh, battleship. And it was quite an interesting moment. I think this made the cover of the Toronto Sun, actually. And then now I'm just experimenting with um, digital stuff and playing around with digital images and flipping them over and doing mirror images. I think they look very interesting. Uh, that's Ken Kesey. I was uh, shooting early at the uh, International Authors Festival down at the waterfront as well back in the, back in the late 70s and early 80s. That's Ken Kesey, a nice little shot of him up against the bar. And the next one is uh, James Baldwin also from the film fest, from the uh, Authors Festival. And uh, it's Margaret Atwood exercising the demons out of the publisher of the Toronto Star. I thought that was kind of a nice little moment. And then again, I just do some nice natural landscape stuff that I find very soothing and very simple and it's a nice change. And basically, um, so that, that's actually sections of a crane on a construction site. And it's just one image, but of course, you're playing around with it and, and editing and flipping it over and stuff like that. So that's a little spread of my stuff. Um, I'm going to uh, stop this now and go back. And uh, are we all still there? Uh, yes, we are. Thank you very much, Tom. I really enjoyed the, 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 the spread. Uh, I also uh, find it really interesting, the stories behind all the pictures. The, the, the pictures that you're the, you're, you're, uh, 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 that you're that you're documenting there. I like connecting with people, and I get very uh, personal with them. It's uh, photography, you know. It, it, it's you know, it's a very camera is a very cold thing, and it's a very mechanical thing. But if you can reach somebody emotionally and get some impact and emotion into a photo, then I think you've really accomplished something. And you know, it becomes an important image, and it reflects life and the spirit of life. So that's what I try to do. Okay, well, thank you so much, Tom. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say, or I can then move on to uh, uh, onto the next thing? No, thank you very much. It's been an honor to be part to participate in this event, and it's a great event. And there's some uh, unbelievable artists, and I've seen work there that has just blown me away. They're so fantastic. So, congratulations, everybody. This was a great event. Thank uh, you.
Great to have you on the show. On the show. <laughs> Tatiana, Tatiana, turn on your video. Tatiana, turn on your video. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, great to have you here. Uh, great to have us all here. Thank you. I just wanted to mention, wrap this up slowly. As we, uh, I hear some sound in the back, and I wonder what is that. So um, I, as I mentioned in the beginning, uh, Q and A's. We didn't have any Q and A's this time, but we had some lovely comments here. Uh, quite a few thank yous. Um, I'm not sure. Do we want to read them or? What do you, what do you, what, do you, what does the consensus think? <laughs> what do you guys think? <laughs> I know what I, I know what I would like to say is I would really like to express my deepest appreciation to Teresa for what she's done. Oh, so smooth, and and Angela for for as uh, as always, Ange, you just you know how to lead back. So it's great, and and to be, it's an honor to be included with all you and do this. I just thank want so to much, I just want to thank everybody for coming out. Definitely thank Teresa. Uh, she has been invaluable and she's done such a great job for all of us. And I was so impressed by the art guys. Uh, I, I was I remain I'm speechless in the presence of such so much talent. Um, I've always thought that if I had, to, you know, if you believe in reincarnation, I always wanted to come back with the ability to be an artist. So I have such respect for people that can create. And um, thank you and bravo to everyone. And thanks everyone for attending. Thank you very much.